I hate horror games. I hate the atmosphere, I hate the music, and most of all, I hate the jump scares. But what if there's a horror game I want to play just without losing any sleep? I'm on Observation Duty is a simple but clever game. You are in control of several CCTV cameras and, throughout the night, anomalies will occur which you have to detect and report. These range from the mundane, like objects appearing and disappearing, to the slightly more eerie abyss and painting changes. However, the game developer, whoever they are, is sneaky. Because you are staring so intently at the screen looking for these small changes, they do introduce a few jump scares. Now I want to play Exorcist Spot the Difference, but I don't want old Spooky Boy here to show his ugly mug and ruin my day, so let's see if we can figure out a better way to play. My initial thought is to keep it quite high level because the game is essentially just an image diffing game. First things first is to turn down the creepy music. Now let's write a program which grabs the pixels for a given window, which is possible with a few Win32 calls. After that we set up an elaborate system which injects key presses into the game to automatically cycle between the rooms. It then takes an initial capture of each room and then periodically takes a new capture and diffs that against the original. This actually works for the abyss, but it didn't find this geezer here. Basically, the problem with this solution is that the game applies a post-processing effect to the final image to simulate TV static, which wreaks havoc with the image diffing algorithm, because effectively all the pixels are always changing. And even if we add some sort of threshold to the diff, the game is so dark that it finds it hard to pick up on a lot of these changes. We need to go a level deeper. Looking at the game files, we can see that it's a Unity game, so it was almost certainly written in C-sharp. Now C-sharp binaries tend to be a little bit easier to reverse engineer, because they still contain a lot of metadata about classes and variable names, which in C++ land can all be stripped out. I'm using a tool called .peak from JetBrains to pull the game binary apart, but other tools are available. Now I know I said C-sharp should be easier to reverse engineer, but I was not expecting this when I opened it up. It's all in Finnish. And my GCSE in German is of little use here. So looking through the class list, a few things stand out to me. Mr. Spook and Open Your Eyes. Now it's unlikely I'm going to learn Finnish for this, but the game does play in English, so that does give us a starting point. Let's search for the string Anomaly, which does appear in the game. And we found it here in the function anomal anomaly uh, an anom anomaly fix animatio anomaly fix animation. This takes a mo mon Mondaco. a variable called how many and displays text saying that the anomaly or anomalies were fixed. Now I'm just perusing the code and this massive switch statement caught my eye. It's called proceedings and takes an integer and depending on that int sets some sort of state to true for a bunch of different objects. Now with all the finish that I've learnt so far, we can see that some of these objects are probably an abyss or abyss or spook. Also at the end of the function, if we aren't past the number 6969, then it increases the anomaly account, which luckily for us is in English. So my educated guess is that this function gets called when an anomaly is added, as it appears to activate said anomaly and keeps track of the total number of active anomalies. This is called from the very descriptive function I got an idea or time moves on and something happens. Now at the end of this function, it picks a random element from an array called numbers to choose from and passes it into our proceedings function. Also, looking at the end of this function with the big switch statement in, it also removes the item from this list before it increases the active anomaly account. And then finally, if we search for this variable name, it's initialized in start, which Unity will call when the script is enabled, and it's populated with a bunch of numbers. So to sum up, the game creates a list of numbers where each one represents an anomaly, randomly picks one, activates it, and then removes it from the list. Presumably, this is to prevent the same anomaly appearing more than once in the same playthrough. So we've done the theory, now it's time for the practical. We want to inspect this program as it's running, do some dynamic analysis and see what we can observe. There's plenty of tools for doing this, including dnspy, which includes support for Unity. However, let's do something a little bit more low level. 
because why not? Let's take our screen grab program and throw away everything other than the code which finds the window handle. Now I'm not going to get into the weeds of CLR or JIT or any of the other three letter acronyms, but at the end of the day, your c -sharp program gets executed on your CPU. So somewhere, somehow, it gets translated into machine instructions. And the same is true for the memory allocations. When this game runs and creates this list of integers, it must exist somewhere in your RAM. Now a .NET list stores items contiguously, i.e. one after the other without any gaps. The Win32 API is pretty powerful and allows us to dump the memory of a running process. So I think our plan should be to dump the process memory of the game whilst it's running, and then find the address of this array in memory and then periodically keep checking it. When the contents of the array changes, then we know that a new anomaly has been activated because it gets removed from the list. We can then find the missing number and then look it up. In practical terms, we walk through all the virtual pages and for any that are actually allocated to real memory and are read writable, we search in for our list of numbers and if we find it, we keep track of that address. Now it's certainly possible that this series of numbers will appear more than once in memory and to keep things simple, I'm just going to run the following logic it per possible location in a separate thread. In other words, we're not going to try and filter down which one of these addresses is the one we actually want. So for any given address that might be our numbers to choose from array, we copy the memory from the game into our little program and compare it against the original list. If we find a mismatch, then we print the missing number as well as the array and update the original array so we don't keep printing the diff over and over again. And then we just go around again. So nothing is happening. It's found a possible location for the anomaly list, but despite anomalies being added to the game, it's never changing. I've retraced my steps and I've seen where I've gone wrong. I should have checked the name of the class we're looking in, Second House Events. There's another class called Surveillance Camera Scene Events with a very similar code. The game does have two levels and each has a different initial numbers to choose from, so I guess I was just looking in the wrong place. Sometimes you can get so caught up in reverse engineering that you can start off down the wrong path and not even realize it. Anyway, I've updated the array and now we can see the IDs getting printed. The problem now is that when we get a new anomaly, we have to pause the game, look at the activation switch statement, do a rough translation, and then click the report. This is all very well for things that translate well, but what the heck is shoulder and sausage door animation? Back to the code, and we can see this function called report stripping, which appears to handle checking whether the report you filed was correct. This very handily maps our object names we found at the start to the English word for the rooms and the anomaly type. So I did what any normal person would do and I built a spreadsheet which contains the ID, the finish, the English, the room and the type. Interestingly, Google has this Google Translate function which makes this pretty trivial. It's not perfect, it has a weird obsession with sausages. For example, sausage table 2. We don't ask about sausage table 1. Anyway, let's bring this into the program. And look at that, clear instructions on how to play the game. But let's take this one step further. We can read from the process memory, but we can also write to it. So let's fill our array with the same repeated number so we always get the same anomaly. I'm going to go with the bedroom abyss because A, it's the default option in the report UI, and B, I don't fancy taking my chances with either sausage lady or in the eye sausage. Now, should you copy a C++ vector to a c -sharp list in another process? No, but I'm going to anyway. Now look at that, we have one anomaly and it's the same every time. And the icing on the cake is that we can now inject some mouse presses to actually file the report for us. Cool, now I can go off and do something fun whilst playing my game. That's creepy. Somehow the game has still let intruders in. I'm just going to quickly report that to get rid of it. Ah, I see what's happened here. There's another function called add bad monsoons, which will reintroduce the intruder IDs back into the array. I guess this means that all the anomalies will only ever appear once, except for the intruders, which could happen multiple times. Anyway, we're just about to win. I'm not sure I deserve this achievement.
We could fix this problem by periodically overwriting the array to remove these intruders. However, it's kind of funny that, despite our best efforts, they crept back in. I guess I like horror games now, if you hot patch the memory to remove all the horror bits. But the low-level fun doesn't end here. If you want to see how I reverse-engineered a classic Zelda glitch, then check out this next video.